Hey everyone, welcome to our weekly COVID-19 update. Uh, this is our update for the week of May 20th, 2020. I'm Ken Adamo, Chief of Analytics at DAT, and I'm joined here with Ned Damon, who is our Principal Data Scientist. Um, Ned, Hi, with, everybody. The, with the holiday weekend coming up, do you have any plans? Wow, there's a holiday weekend coming. I, I mean, I don't know. It's been it's been kind of every day blends into each other, but I think I'm going to make a big pot of chili and uh, spend some good time with the lad. Uh, yourself? Yeah, I'm actually going to burn the first PTO day of the year and make it a four day weekend. So I'm looking forward to it. Nice, nice. Um, so key points for this week. Can you can you walk us through, Ned? What's going on out there? Oh yeah, absolutely. So uh, our kind of key takeaways for this week are that dry van and repair loaded truck ratios and just sort of the general market conditions are on an upward trend. Um, it's important to distinguish between like the trend and the level. The trend is good. The levels are maybe uh, could be a little bit better. We're we're coming out of a pretty deep hole. Uh, market conditions are you know they're they're not rosy, but they're they're definitely improving, which is awesome. You know, love to see that slope up into the right. Um, dry van spot rates are going up. And then uh, refer, there's a little bit of a split um, on the model optimism levels. Um, I'm, I'm a little more pessimistic, but I'm also a little bit more pessimistic of a guy, but it's still, it's, it's, they're all up and to the right. It's just a question of, of the level of bullishness. So, um, you know, it's a good news week. Uh, I think that's it for the key points. Um, we ready to move on to market dynamics? Yeah, sure. So, you know, just as in prior weeks, we're going to start this week talking about market dynamics and sort of how they're impacting the spot market. I wanted to start off with dry van load board activity. So we have load to truck here. We talked about last week levels were just a little bit below, if not matching 2019. Good news. We're a little bit above 2019 here. And again, right at the base of that hockey stick pattern where we would see typically kind of seasonality takeover in the dry van spot market. I'm going to pivot to reefer real quick. This is the second week we've been at over 2019 levels and seasonality is much more pronounced when it comes to reefers, just given produce and all of the cookouts and typically, you know, commercial food service type things at sporting events and restaurants. We're, we're closely watching it, but the, the trends are good, if not slowing down a tad bit on their upswing. I wanted to show kind of a bit of a flashback here. So this was roughly a month ago, the, the dry van MCI map that we showed on April 14th. And uh, you'd almost think it was a mistake, right? The only two blips of color really were in South Texas, uh, maybe a little bit in the breadbasket there, but things were overall very, very slow. And it was just really a month ago. If I fast forward to today, uh, technically yesterday, this is 519. It's a lot more color. I think the average shade of the map is much more shifted towards that yellowish, even if not a little bit of rosy pink. Uh, key areas that we're watching on the drive-in side, Southern California continues to be hot. Pretty much the entire Southeast is at least neutral, if not um, edging over there towards a hot market. And then we're starting to hear rumblings about automakers firing back up and um, we're, we're keeping an eye on the upper Great Lakes. You can see um, Western Michigan showing a bit of color there, um, but just kind of general warmth, if you will, in the in the Great Lake region. Uh, crescendoing up to reefer, a lot more color. If, if anything, it, it mirrors some of the um, general trends in dry van, just in a more pronounced way. Southeast, hot in a lot of the main market areas, um, the lower Midwest, Southern Texas, and then the Southwest all showing. Um, Really, really good signs of strength. Um, this naturally leads us into our conversation about spot rate trends. We've talked a lot about how load truck and market conditions are highly predictive of near term changes in spot rate trends. And you know, again, uh, just like father time, that trend proves to be undefeated. What we see here is drive in spot rates year over year. This is a chart I'm hoping that everyone's become familiar with. And the really good news story here, and probably the main takeaway is you know, we've been talking about dry van lagging behind reefer a little bit and more just sort of coming up off the bottom and flattening out not so much the case this week we've seen a nice seven day trend of acceleration upward in the dry van rates uh, we've put some distance between this year and 2016 more or less setting our sights on the 2017 2019 levels that's why i really like this chart because you can see the years split out if we zoom in and just show the last two years we see the three-day weighted moving average really getting close to the, the three-day weighted moving average of 2019. 
you know, we still have five to seven cents of ground to clear, but overall, um, you know, really setting its sights on last year. We did some math and, you know, the interesting thing is so far, you know, just since March, we've seen um, roughly 45% uh, travel in rates. So if you take the absolute value of rates climbing up, falling back down, and then starting to climb back up, um, that's about 45% of rate movement. And that's more than you may typically expect to see in a normal year. So this really speaks to some of the short-term volatility, but then also the nature of a, of, a, of a robust and free market to regress back towards the mean, if you will. Really settling into a seasonal trough. If you look at uh, the yellow line, which is 2017, the green line, which was 2019, it, this is a time where you might see some up and down weeks, but overall it's a jagged line up through the end of June, early July, peaking the produce season and then falling back off in late summer. Just to touch real quick, you know, we've seen now a couple of days where the three-day weighted moving average was actually showed year over year growth for 2020 over 2019, which again is very positive, but it's going to be harder to maintain that because last year and, and years prior, you see that sort of, again, hockey stick pattern in rates. So we're going to be very closely watching that to ensure we don't end up um, slowing down in that recovery. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Ned because there's some really interesting stuff going on in the forecast models this week. And um, I think it really helps talk about and illustrate some of the volatility in the market. Um, all right. Well, we're going to start off by looking at our dry van forecast that were made yesterday. So the blue line are the uh, actual paid rates as calculated by RateView historically. Uh, you can see that nice kind of a sine wavy pattern there. And then off to the right, you can see the, the standard spaghetti of our model suite. We've got the um, rate cast model in a green. We've got the short term model in a red. And we've got our two blended forecasts in yellow and gray um, that are kind of combinations of the short term focused and the more um, strong long-term base of uh, rate cast. Uh, and you can see that there's broad model agreement among the, the dry van spot rates, at least for the next couple of weeks, which is great. Uh, the models are all kind of on the same page. And I think that that really speaks to the fact that we are expecting this, this up and to the right trend to continue. Uh, when you get out towards like mid-June, uh, there's going to be a little bit of divergence about the levels of optimism, but I think that um, overall the next couple of weeks are going to be nice, nice and smooth sailing. We're not at the levels that we'd want to be, but the trend is very, very positive. Uh, next, we're going to look at reefer rates. It's that same uh, chart where the actual paid rates is uh, calculated by rate view are in the blue, and then our model spaghetti is off on the right. Here, there's a little bit of divergence in the level of optimism where the short-term model is very, very bullish. Um, it is kind of overshooting and it's thinking that, um, in my opinion, that rates are going to go up above the, the peak. I just don't see that happening. Uh, whereas Ratecast is expecting that the current trajectory, there was kind of a kink in the, in the upward trajectory happening about early part of May, and it's expecting that that trend is going to continue forward. And I'm, I'm a partisan for, for Ratecast there. I think that the Ratecast model is going to be a pretty good describer of what's uh, going to be happening in the next couple of weeks, at least for Reefer. But, you know, things can always go up, and, and that, that would be nice. Last, we're going to look at flatbed. Uh, you can see that same structure of model agreement uh, that you saw with uh, van, dry van, at least for the first couple of weeks, but the divergence is happening faster, uh, with the short-term model being a little bit more optimistic, whereas the uh, rate cast model is a little bit, again, it's optimistic, but it's a little bit more tempered optimism. And I think this is a really good time to talk about um, using the models, the reason why we present the model suite and one of the, the key features of forecasts. And that is that forecasts are tools, but they are not substitutes for thinking. And it's really important that you look at these kind of data products and that you also weigh them against your own experience and your own foresight about kind of the unexpected. So for instance, if uh, there's another round of, of social distancing and, and lockdowns that are being enforced, then I would expect that the forecast would go one way. Um, but if you know there's continued expansion in the, the industrial and consumer economy, then I would expect that uh, the short-term trends are gonna be more predictive than um, the slightly more pessimistic rate cast model. And I think that goes into our question for the week, which is, uh, what does recovery in the freight markets look like? Uh, Ken, do you want to handle that one? 
Yeah, for sure, Ned. Thank you. You know, ultimately, my my favorite phrase that 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 you've been hearing a lot of out there is the sense of a new normal. We get we get a lot of questions about when are things going to go back to normal, um, and I, I just don't know that there is a level that we'll ever declare normal post COVID, or at least not for a very long time. So, I want to go back and look at some charts that we showed prior in the video just to illustrate some of what we're thinking, because I wanna break this down into short-term recovery and then longer term, more systemic recovery. So real quick, I wanna look at dry van year over year. So what we think uh, and what the models are telling us, because in the shorter term, we're able to leverage the, the scientific models a lot more heavily, is that we, we see no real evidence of um, a major inflection in this recovery for dry vans. Ned mentioned earlier, if there's a major policy shift, if there's a relapse in uh, infection or mortality rates, that could of course change. But you know, overall, you know, we see these lanes between 2016 and 20, let's say 17 and 19, as sort of the the bands that we would expect the recovery to continue in over the next four to six weeks. If we flip to refer, what you can see is we've already sort of ingrained ourselves in that upper band. And reefer has a much stronger seasonal pressure just due to produce, like we mentioned earlier, and other food service activities. But the expectation, um, at least from between our models and our industry ex experts, is that we'll see um, continued growth there through the end of June, early July. But again, I wouldn't expect anything monumental outside of the the seasonal trough that we seem to have settled into. The real question is going to be as we you know come into a, a typical seasonal drop post um, post peak season in June, July, and August, you know, really to the extent that rates collapse back down will be something very important to watch. Now we pivot towards longer term recovery. And um, if you'll excuse the very poorly done trend analysis that I was able to whip up this morning, what it really shows is that the longer term view of rates. So what I did was I took the year over year charts and I essentially stitched them all together into one continuous time series for a dry van. And then I made some very crude lines in, in red to kind of show the longer term freight cyclic. So anyone who's been in transportation for a while is familiar with the fact that we see these 12 to 18 to even 24 month long term freight cycles where you know capacity is drawn down as rates fall and it causes kind of a, a bottoming out. We'll see rates go back up as capacity exits the market, which will incentivize more truck purchasing, which ultimately will culminate in a peaking of rates and then oversupply of capacity and rates coming back down. So I, this illustrates really a complete freight cycle um, and then the downside of the next freight cycle. So what we would have expected uh, pre-COVID is another red line up and to the right. Um, the question now becomes how much damage has COVID inflicted on the economy, how long will the damage last, and what are the long-term scars and implications of uh, the financial crisis related to COVID. That to us is what's going to stunt or limit any long-term rate recovery into late 20 and early 21, um, which was when we would really expect to see almost a turning of the next freight cycle at the end of 21. So that's really what we're watching um, specifically in the industrial sector. Uh, does that does that Ned answer sort of the question? Um, I, think, I think that it really does. I mean, the future is opaque, but uh, we're all trying to to peer as best we can through the fog. Um, so uh, I, at this point, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, we appreciate uh, all of the work that folks are doing. And uh, if you want a weekly update in a text form as opposed to a video form, or you know, you just feel like looking at stuff, uh, you can go to dat.com slash COVID-19, that's C-O-V-I-D hyphen 19. Um, if you have more personal questions for us, uh, the old joke is uh, questions, comments, concerns, or burns, you can send them to askiq at dat.com. That's our askiq inbox, A-S-K-I-Q at dat.com. If you email that inbox, we're also going to be offering our top 50 lanes report for free. So that is the short-term historical and the short-term forecast for those. Uh, top 50 lanes. Again, just email us at askiq at dat.com to get those. Uh, next week, we're going to have another exciting update. And uh, I, I think that's about it for the week. Ken, you got anything to add? Nope. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And we hope you have a great Memorial Day weekend.